Hello, my name is Brennan Morgan. This is my alternate sci-fi World War II, um, I've referred to as the Walker War. This is kind of a depiction of World War II where instead of tanks, you have these bipedal, or in one case, tripedal uh, mech walkers, in addition to your standard infantry vehicles and stuff like that. For this first battle here, we have this river, which um, some allied forces are trying to cross. They're supported by a very light tank and perhaps a more medium tank, which is firing over the river. Uh, on the other side, you have some Germans who've set up a defensive position with a heavier tank. As you can see, one of their tanks has been destroyed and they're trying to cross uh, this river. And so we've kind of got a battle about to erupt there. Um, if we move on to the larger mock, this is sort of more based on North Africa, kind of North African campaign. So we have these combined Italian and German forces coming forward and they are facing off against this uh, British and Indian garrison that is located in this kind of desert fortress. Um, there's a well in the courtyard and kind of a bit of a garden. And so this is kind of a point of interest, a valuable strategic place. And so the Axis is going all out on the assault and the British are doing their very best to defend it. Uh, the artillery crews are gonna fight to the very end against all these different mechs. Uh, you can see out there covered by the netting, there's a British artillery position which was overrun. Um, and so they've fallen back to the walls of the citadel um, and the Germans and Italians are coming forward, but there's a lot of carnage, a lot of smoke, a lot of destruction. Talk a little bit about how you reimagined kind of uh, World War II armor and tanks as these kind of futuristic mech type builds and how did that translate into these different builds? Sure thing. Um, these are actually inspired by some of the other uh, mechs, actually from uh, videos from on the Beyond the Brick channel. Um, some other World War II things. I wanted to take my own inspiration on them, but I also, um, much of my process I think started with just one piece or one connection that I really liked. Uh, for example, these kind of Italian tankettes, um, they started with that flap on the front, um, a three by three panel at an angle, and then I was able to build out, find other interesting pieces like that, a uh, two by four curved piece with a sticker that makes a really cool fuel tank. Um, also, interesting things with minifigures. I really enjoy minifigures. Uh, that motorcycle back there was the first thing I made and you can kind of see, there's a technique where you can stick the hand of a minifigure into their leg and so his legs are kind of spread out so he can, he can straddle that motorcycle in a way that a normal minifigure couldn't. It's little details like that that really add so much to a belt. Yeah, um, would you like me to show off the walking yeah. function? So one of the things I really wanted to do would be to automate one of the walkers. Um, I did not have time to get a motor for this, but this one, it is powered. Oh, uh, that's all right. I can fix that later. There's an oscillating mechanism based on the mechanism in a fan that's running down there, and that twists the turret. And because the body is actually loose on there, it moves along with it and we have these gears connecting to the legs. So the legs go up and down and this pretty effective simulation of walking. Now it's moving in place, but it still is able to kind of look like it's moving. And so that's been a very fun thing to kind of show off to people as they come by and look at the mock. It's flawless as long as you crank it all day yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. If I do this again, I'll definitely want to buy one of the Lego maybe power functions kind of motors. And if you can, maybe take us down to this end of the build. You've got kind of the fort section. Talk a little more about the design okay. of that. Um, so the fort section, that was actually why I wanted to do this uh, desert area. I wanted to have this really cool kind of Middle Eastern styled fort with the artillery position. Um, one thing too, I also wanted to include some Indian soldiers. So you can see there's one um, manning this artillery piece and then there's another one bringing shells on the walls because oftentimes there are a lot of nations who fought and who sacrificed huge numbers of people in the Second World War. And so it's extremely important that we don't forget the sacrifices of so many of these countries and peoples and nations who gave up their lives and gave up their time to fight against fascism and help kind of protect and preserve the world.
No, that's a really, really good point. So I'm glad you were able to include those minifigures as well. Now, I know earlier you knocked this one over here, yeah. but that gives us a good opportunity for you to kind of talk about maybe a little more of the design, uh, maybe some of the parts usages in there and how that came together. So I've always been a bit of a sucker for the mixel ball joints. Um, so all of these are, oops, these are a little more fragile, but they're designed as much for play as they are for display. I wanted to make them very poseable, very articulate, um, spinning weapons, opening flaps. Uh, and I also wanted to make it so that they could stand up without too much additional assistance. Uh, the one automated mech does need some help to get standing, but this massive heavy kind of behemoth can kind of stand itself up on just these two feet. There's a lot to do with kind of balance and with finding spots where they can get attached, like this mech that's taking a step here. Um, it's attached on one of its feet to the bridge. And so I, I guess there's a lot of kind of finding sloping and other things. Uh, for some of these, I did use reference images, but for others, I was just kind of going off of imagination, idea, just trying to make something that moved well, posed well, and looked good. I know, I know we talked about the Indian troops earlier. What are some of your favorite elements in some of the other minifigures that you've got represented here? Um, these are a bit more vague. They're not based on like Brickmania troops, but uh, their uniforms are more similar to perhaps like Canadian soldiers. Uh, and so we kind of have, yet again, diversity of allies and people from all over. So we've got these Germans advancing. This one is a little bit more sci-fi than the other, even though both of them feature these mechs. Um, so the Germans have these tanks on their backs, just kind of as an interesting detail. Uh, and we have the classic, like, water poured. Um, this one I actually built in 2019. I was super excited for World War Brick 2020, and that didn't happen. You had to uh, sit on this for a bit, but that's okay. I did, I did modify some of the things. I reworked a lot of the tank turrets. I made that half-track a little better. I'm actually quite happy with the half-track. And we've got this very um, esoteric dude with a, a pickle hob <laughs> and a sniper. Definitely some kind of crazy character in this kind of mech war. It's some kind of leader over there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so do you have any plans to maybe expand on this idea in other parts of uh, World War II or maybe other wars you kind of take almost futuristic like this? Um, I would love to do more of this in the future. I'd love to do uh, maybe something Pacific Theater, maybe Eastern Front or even kind of areas of like Burma. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but we'll have to see what I'm interested in next year, kind of what I'm looking forward to. Um, I could even just expand this desert layout, but um, I think it's still a ways off. I'd love to kind of wait for some inspiration, but I've always really enjoyed making mechs and weird space stuff. And I definitely think I'm not going to stop that anytime soon. Great. Well, keep up the good work. Thanks for coming out to the show and bringing these builds here. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here.